ask me all the time about whether or not they can build a really high-end custom guitar out of a cheap guitar fetish do-it-yourself kit. So that's what I set out to do. And while I was a little bit underwhelmed with the do-it-yourself kit to begin with, I do actually feel like I built a really nice high-end guitar out of it. So if you guys are interested in seeing how I did that, go ahead and stick around. I'm Dan, this is Guns Guitars, this is Coffee. Okay, let's get started. Okay, real quick, before we get started, I want to thank Guitario for being this week's Dream Build tutorial sponsor. If you recall, a few months ago, Guitario offered a free music theory course for you guys to try out, and this time I asked for something maybe a little bit more advanced for some of you higher level players, and so they actually decided to just open up the whole website. That's right, every single course that they offer on their website, no matter what skill level you are at, they're opening up on a free trial for you guys. So go ahead and follow that link in the description. There is no credit card required. That is a big deal. I hate it when websites get your credit card info so that they can bill you when you forget to end your free trial, right? Just set up an account with your email address and you get full access to the entire website. Act now and get a bonus CD. Okay, that's it for the sales pitch. Let's get started. Today, we are building a Telecaster from a cheap kit from Guitar Fetish. This is their lightweight Polonia base model Telecaster build kit. And if you watched my Telecaster kit shootout video, you saw this one and heard this one, and you probably saw and heard that it is not that great of a kit. So we've got a lot of work to do, but it's going to be a really cool build. Okay, so right up front, this kit is going to need a lot of work, uh, mostly because we're going to be fitting it with components that it wasn't really necessarily meant to fit. So. Firstly, we have this Fender Fishman Power Bridge, which is a piezo-equipped bridge. So we're gonna have to route out some room for that microchip right there. Uh, also, our neck pickup is going to be this Gibson 57 Classic PAF pickup. Um, so we're gonna have to route out a spot for a neck humbucker. This neck did not come with the guitar. It is a rosewood neck, which is what uh, my client wanted. And this is a guitar fetish B stock neck. And you can see why it's B stock right here. Up here, this is all really chewed up and you can actually see where a chunk fell out and was just glued back in. So, but this neck did not come with this kit, so it is not matched. So as you can see, let's just say that's like throwing a hot dog down a hallway. So as you can see, I went ahead and traced out the base of the neck. So I'm gonna route it so we get a nice snug fit right there. And then I'm gonna shim the sides of the neck pocket with this 1 32nd basswood that I got from a craft shop. So we're not gonna be able to use just our typical Telecaster control plate. So I'm gonna be making more of a thin line style control plate uh, so that I can route out a bit more right here so that we have room for our battery and all our extra electronics that we're installing. Now, before routing out the body for my new pickup and electronics cavities, I did want to design my pit guard so I knew exactly what parts of the guitar were going to be covered so that I could best route out my cavities. For this pit guard, I decided to try something new and made it out of a $6 piece of sheet metal that I got at my local hardware store. And this task ended up being surprisingly easy once I found a $13 tool on Amazon called a sheet metal nibbler. And as you can see, this thing works absolutely awesome. I had the whole design cut out in just a few minutes. And after touching it up with my Dremel and a file, I had pretty much a perfect metal pit guard. Then I decided to use some simple household products to give it sort of a beat up vintage patina sort of a look. And if you're interested in a step-by-step -step process of this entire build, I do have a video dedicated to it. So definitely check that link out down in the description or up there in the iCard, or just continue watching this playlist after the video ends. Now that my pickguard is made, I can trace out where I want those pickup cavities and control cavities to go underneath. Also, before riding out the body, I decided to fix another issue that I found out when I originally assembled and reviewed this kit, and that's that the string alignment was off between the neck and the bridge. So I went ahead and filled in the original string through holes using some barbecue skewers and wood glue. Then I placed the bridge in the proper spot 
and marked out where the new string through holes need to go. Next, I also measured where I want my battery compartment to go, so I was ready to route that out at the same time I routed out the other control cavities. And lastly, sort of an odd but awesome request from the client was that he wanted a bottle opener installed on the back of this thing. So I went ahead and fabricated something real quick out of this cheap bottle opener that I got on Amazon for just a couple of bucks and ground it down, filed it, sanded it, make it made it look nice and pretty, and then marked where I'm going to route out for that as well. Okay, finally, all of my new holes are marked and all my control cavities are traced for drilling and routing. Before applying the finish, I needed to give this thing a really, really good sanding job. And I hate sanding, so I used my Orbo as much as possible with the exception of a few tiny nooks and crannies that I had to hand sand myself. Now for the finish on this body, again, just like the pickguard, I decided to try out something I'd never done before. So I started by staining the entire thing using Minwax True Black Stain, and then I decided to try and enhance the wood grain using Rub and Buff Silver Leaf Wax Finish. I just rubbed that deep down into the grain. Yeah, baby! And then I used some teak oil and a paper towel to pull off the wax finish sitting on top while leaving the wax finish that was pressed down into the grain. I'm extremely proud of how this finish turned out. So if you're interested in step-by-step -step directions on how to do this finish, go ahead and stay in the playlist at the end of this video or click the link down in the description. But for now, let's go ahead and move on. Wiring this thing actually turned out to be quite the nightmare. If you guys were following this build, you know exactly what I mean. I'm about ready to throw this guitar out the freaking window. But bottom line, after tons and tons of testing and troubleshooting, I finally figured out that the culprit was actually the Fishman power chip. So I actually removed the power chip from the circuit and designed a completely passive circuit that gives me all the same tonal options that the power chip did. So I've got my four-way Telecaster selector switch. I've got a magnetic volume, a piezo volume, and a master tone for both. But in addition to that, I have a push-pull pot on the volume that does in and out of phase between these two pickups. In phase. Out of phase. And then I have a push-pull pot on the piezo volume that allows me to either blend on the same channel the piezo with the magnetics or split them out to separate channels so that you can run a stereo setup. And it works absolutely beautifully. are interested in seeing exactly how I wired this up, check out my Patreon page where I post all of my wiring diagrams for my dream build tutorials. Now, I really believe that a full passive setup is much better than an active setup because you cut out the battery and you cut out an extra point of failure right there. But the only downside is that I already routed and installed a battery box, so that's really frustrating. So we've got an awesome useless battery box with no battery in it. So if the client asks what that's all about, I'm just gonna call it an expansion bay. And of course, lastly, I did install this bottle opener here as per the client's request. And now Polynia is actually a really soft wood. It's one of the softest of the hardwoods. So to prevent any tear out from the screw holes, I went ahead and reinforced the screw holes with some liquid super glue. I read that you could do that on a woodworking forum. And I gotta tell you, it worked wonderfully. These screws hold much tighter. So I'm much more confident that they will not tear out the first time this bottle opener is used. All in all, I'm extremely proud of how this build turned out. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. It it sounds as good as it looks and check out how cool this headstock came out. And if you've enjoyed seeing how this guitar was built, check out this playlist over here of some other custom dream build tutorials or continue on in this playlist so you can get some step-by-step -step instructions on how to do some of the more complicated parts of this build. Until next time, I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars and I'll see you in the next video.